Time is so powerful. Just think about it. This device in front of you, it tells you every time when to wake up, when to have your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, when to go to school, when to come back from school, when to sleep. Everything you do is according to this small device. But were we always so resourceful? Did we use this always? No, that was not the case. We have come a long way. And this journey needs to be learned. And that's why we are here. Today, we'll be learning how to measure time or how it all started, the measurement of time, the story of the measurement of time. So, welcome everybody. If you wish to learn this in short and crisp format, I'm Saurabh, I welcome you to Concept Bytes on your very own Baiju 6th, 7th and 8th channel. In today's short video, I'll teach you three important things. First, what did our ancestors use? Right? How did they measure time? Right? It's a very good question we can start with. Then, how the transition from those ancient methods towards the new methods, the clocks happened. Right? This is the transition which is a very important transition. So, we'll learn about that and then finally, I'll show you a nice simulation which is very interesting. That's the Baiju's way. Alright, let's begin. The ancient way of measuring time. Think about it. Day, month and year. What happens in a day? Sun rises and sets. Again, next day it rises and then it sets. It follows a pattern. Alright, right? Sun rises up and sets. Very good. Month. What happens in a month? Come on, think about it. Is there a, is there a pattern you can see? Moon is going from new moon to full moon. Then new moon. Approximately 14, 14 days it takes. 14 days, then 14 days, then 14 days, right? So this is another cycle. Correct? There's a pattern to it. From new moon to full moon to new moon to full moon to new moon to full moon, right? It's a, it's a cycle. It repeats itself. Then, think about the year. We have seasons and every year you have those four seasons repeating themselves, right? So, earth revolves around the sun. It takes a fixed amount of time. So, in all these events, there is one common thing and that's why they were chosen as a reference to measure time. What is it? Think about it. Because if you are able to crack it, it means you're on the right track. You have mastered the art of, I would say, self-thinking. Come on, think about it. What's common? A pattern. If you're thinking pattern, if you're thinking periodicity, everything is fine, right? They repeat themselves after a fixed interval of time. How much? I'm not talking, but they repeat themselves. So if I had to tell someone, I went to Delhi and then came back, it took me two days. What do I mean? Vaguely, if I tell you, it means in this duration, do bar suraj uga or do bar suraj set uga, okay, right? The sun raised first, then it set, then it raised again, and then it set again, right? So it means I can say it took me two days. I gave a measurement of time using what? Two days? That thing, right? So that's why. What do we need? We need someone to have a periodic motion. What is a periodic motion? A motion that repeats itself after equal intervals of time is known as periodic motion, right? It should repeat itself after a fixed interval of time. And every time it repeats, it should take the same amount of time. That's why we call it periodic. Class mein periods hote na, hai na? right? So that's true. This is periodic motion. Now, it's okay. Previously, we used this but we had devices also. What were those devices? Sundial. Ingenious. Beautiful device. See, it's okay. But within the day, sun is traveling across the sky. It's not very easy to perceive, right, directly. So the shadow of the sun, or I would say shadow of anything because of sunlight, that became a reference. Sundial, it used the shadow. The travel of the sun throughout the day, it changed the direction of the shadow and that's how we said this is this particular time of the day. Sundial was one ancient device. Then we had water clocks. How much time the water takes to get emptied, that is one way, right? So this is one water clock we used to use. Then we had sand clocks. These are still quite famous. That one you might see in Delhi Jantar Mantar. Water clocks, also you might see in some museums. Sand clocks. Still, we use them in gift shops. In gift shops, you might see those small, small sand clocks. They say it's one minute each, right? So all these are ancient time measuring devices. Nice, but still, we want it to be precise. What did we do? We started thinking. This is what we use now. A wall clock, a table clock, a digital clock, right? And we are going 
fancier and fancier with each passing day. But how it all started? It started with this simple thing. A thread hanging from a ceiling with a heavy bob in the end. We call it a pendulum. It's called a pendulum. And all the stories started with this. Ancient devices and modern devices are in between. Pendulum. Sir, why pendulum? What is so special about pendulum? Galileo was once in a party. He was in a palace. There was a chandelier. Chandelier is a jhumar. He saw the chandelier swinging here and there. He realized that this swinging is repeating itself and it's taking a fixed amount of time. It can be a reference. That's what pendulum does. There's a stand, there's a string, there's a bob. And what it does? It swings. We call it, which motion is this? Periodic, yes, but it's also a two and fro motion, which you have learned in class sixth, by the way, right? Because it's taking the same path. It's repeating the same path. It's going to, it's going fro. It's going to, it's going fro. Hey na? That's why. These two are the extreme positions, A and B. Beach wali hai mean position, right? This is called a two and fro motion or oscillatory motion, you can say. Important thing is, time period, same rata hai. What is time period? A se, वापस A आने में कितना टाइम लगा? If you talk about B, B से वापस B आने में कितना टाइम लगा? If you talk about mean position, वापस mean position आने में कितना टाइम लगा? So all this is a time period and it remains the same, right? So what is time period? The time taken by the pendulum to complete one oscillation is known as the time period. To complete what? One oscillation means one oscillation or one oscillation or you can say one oscillation, hai na? So all these are one oscillation only, okay? So this is what we call as time period. Now, let me just show you a small simulation as promised because that simulation will give you a feeling of how Baiju students learn. All right, let me just, I'll just show it to you now. Look at this. This is our simulation. Ancient time measuring devices. First one is a sand clock, right? Let me just start it. When you start it, you will turn it and you will see the sand starts falling down. Look at this. The sand is falling down na? and the timer is running. This is we are using the modern method to see how much time the sand takes to fall down. So what you can say, Ki bhai, this sand clock to empty completely the one compartment, kitna time lagega? Let's see, kitna time lag raha isko? It's moving, 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 right? Hai na? Ye chalta rahega, chalta rahega, chalta rahega. And at, after a point, it will stop. When? When the sand in the upper compartment finishes. So it took 35 seconds. So you can say 35 seconds ki duration hai. It takes 35 seconds to empty one compartment of the sand, right? Sand clock. 35 seconds you can measure from this. Very good. Then we have a water clock. Now this one is different from what we saw in that water clock. There was water coming out of that cone. But here, we have this bowl of water and then we have this disc. So you have to put this disc in the bowl and it will take some time to sink, right? It took seven seconds, right? This becomes a reference. Seven seconds it will take for this bowl to sink in the bowl, right? Then we have a sundial and sundial is something we all understand. It changes the direction of the shadow according to the position of the sun and these are the ancient time measuring devices and it's always nice to try it with your own hands you know? so go ahead there's a link given to you in the description check out nice amazing simulations and animations on Baiju's learning app and learn in the most interesting way and the most engaging way all right so with this we are done with today's session we have completed all the three things I promised. I hope you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you believe these short contents are really helpful to you. And tell us in the comment section, what are your thoughts? Do you want more? What else you want? Because we like to talk to each other, right? See you everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.